says consider a non pipeline processor with a clock rate of 2.5 gigahertz and average cycles per instruction of 4 the same processor is upgraded to a pipeline processor with 5 stages but due to the internal pipeline delay the clock speed is reduced to 2 gigahertz assume that there are no stalls in the pipeline the speed up achieved in this pipeline processor is okay so whenever you solve such questions you need to understand between the lines that are that the question says okay so what do i mean by that i mean that when you have been told that it is a 2.5 gigahertz processor what does that mean 2.5 gigahertz processor means that in one second 2.5 giga cycles are completed okay so 2.5 gigahertz processor which is initially a non pipeline processor all right and this specification this means that in one second how many pipeline how many cycles are completed 2.5 gigahertz okay so in one second 2.5 giga cycles okay <clears throat> now since it is given that an instruction takes four cycles so we'll write this down one instruction takes four cycles to complete okay it takes four cycles to complete and we know that 2.5 giga cycles are completed in one second so one cycle is completed in how many seconds one cycle is completed in 1 by 2.5 giga seconds that is simple unitary method and therefore 4 cycles will be completed in 4 into 1 by 2.5 giga seconds therefore 4 cycles or 1 instruction would be completed in 4 by 2.5 giga seconds all right this was the scenario for the old processor or the non-pipeline processor now when this processor has been converted into a pipeline processor what is the scene see now it is given to you <clears throat> that the processor is 2 gigahertz so the specification is 2 gigahertz which means that in one second two giga cycles are now completed so one second <clears throat> so two giga cycles are completed all right and it is also specified that there are no stalls what does this line means this line means that a single instruction only takes one cycle. This is very important. When you are told that there are no stalls in the pipeline, it means that a single instruction which was previously taking four cycles will now take one single cycle. Okay. So this means <coughs> one instruction takes one cycle to complete okay so just like we find found out the time taken by one cycle to complete was 1 by 2.5 gigaseconds in the previous case here the time taken to complete one cycle would be 1 by 2 gigaseconds all right and this would be the time that would be required by a single instruction to complete now what would be the speed up speed up is nothing but the time taken by the uh, old processor which was not pipelined or time taken by a single instruction to complete in the old processor divided by the time taken by the a single instruction to complete in the new processor okay so i can write it as old execution time of an instruction we can compare uh, a single instruction in both the cases of an instruction and this would be divided by new execution time of a single instruction again okay so the comparison should be the same 
so what is the values on the numerator and denominator old execution time initially one instruction was taking four cycles and four cycles needed four by 2.5 gigaseconds to complete so the old execution time was four by 2.5 gigaseconds and the new execution time is one instruction takes one cycle and one cycle takes one by two gigaseconds so the new execution time is one by two gigaseconds so the correct answer here would be 3.2 this is the speed up value that is attained when you calculate uh, the correct answer from here and you find out the procedure in which this uh, question is performed okay so basically by 3.2 times the new pipeline would be uh, uh, there is a difference of 3.2 times between the old pipeline and the uh, new one or the old non-pipeline processor and the new pipeline processor all right so that's all for today's lecture i hope you understood this question please practice says that the instruction execution in a processor is divided into five stages instruction fetch instruction decode operand fetch execute and write back these stages take 5 4 20 10 and 3 nanosecond a pipeline implementation of the processor requires buffering between each pair of consecutive stages with a delay of 2 nanoseconds. Two pipeline implementation of the pro processor are contemplated and these two are given to you as below. So the first option says that a knife pipeline implementation with five stages is contemplated and second is an efficient pipeline where the OF that means operand fetch phase is divided into two stages OF1 and OF2 with execution times of 12 nanosecond and 8 nanosecond okay so initially the OF phase was of 20 nanosecond in uh, a single stage okay now it has been divided into two stages OF1 and OF2 so you have to find out the speed up which is correct to two decimal places achieved by EP. EP is efficient pipeline over NP. NP is knife pipeline in executing 20 independent instructions with no hazards. Okay. So one formula that you need to remember here is the formula for execution time of a pipeline. Okay. So execution time. This formula states that k plus n minus 1 multiplied by the clock time that I'm writing as tp gives you the execution time. Here k, k means the number of stages, okay. n is the number of instructions that are to be executed and tp is the clock time as I said. So if we know the value of these, all these variables, then we can find the execution time in both these cases and then find the speed up. Okay, so this is clock time. Now for a naive pipeline or for NP, let's see what would be the execution time. If I say execution time for naive pipeline is denoted by ENP, then the value of K is 5. Okay, so K is 5 plus instruction is n that is 20 which is 20 in both the cases irrespective of how we are implementing the pipeline multiplied by tp now tp what is the formula for calculating tp when you have been given the stage delay as well as the buffer delay now what is stage delay stage delays are basically the time taken by each of the stages and buffer delay is this 2 nanosecond which is the time that each stage or two consecutive stages have while executing okay so uh, when we know that two consecutive stages execute with a delay of two nanosecond this is nothing but buffer delay so how is tp calculated tp here would be calculated as maximum of stage delay plus buffer delay all right so stage delay plus buffer delay and these value would be 
total five in number and why would they be five? See, stage delay for the first stage IF is five and there is a two nanosecond buffer delay in each stage. So we'll add two in all these five stages. So five plus two is seven, four plus two is six, 20 plus two is 22, 10 plus two is 12 and 3 plus 2 is 5. So the maximum value out of these two is 22. So TP comes out to be 22 nanosecond and ENP would be 5 plus 20 is 25, 25 minus 1 is 24, 24 multiplied by 22. Alright and this value would come out to be 528 nanosecond. Now we must calculate the execution time for uh, the efficient pipeline also. This was the knife pipeline. Now we'll do it for efficient pipeline. For efficient pipeline again we have k equal to 5. See sorry here in knife pipeline this is k. k is 5. In efficient pipeline since a single stage of operand fetch is divided into two phases therefore k or the number of stages would now become 6 that is 5 plus 1. All right. So uh, these stages would be instruction fetch, instruction decode, OF1, OF2, then execute and then write back. All right. So these are the six phases. N would remain to be 20 and TP would be maximum of the values. Now the values are 5 and the buffer delay is 2. So 5 plus 2 is 7, 4 plus 2 is 6. Now this 20 is broken down into 12 and 8. So 12 plus 2 is 14, 8 plus 2 is 10, then we come to 10. 10 plus 2 is 12, 3 plus 2 is 5. So the maximum out of these is 14. So the TP or the clock time comes out to be 14 nanosecond and the execution in this case, in case of effective pipeline, the total execution time would come out to be K, which is 6 plus 20, which is N minus 1 multiplied by 14. And when you calculate this, 25 into 14 would come out to be 350. All right. Now, what is speed up? Speed up is nothing but the original value or the original execution time divided by the new execution time or ENP divided by EEP. So ENP was calculated to be 528. New time on EEP is 350 and this value would approximate to around 1.50. Okay, since you have to tell till two decimal places, 1.50 is right answer or you can write 1.50 as your final answer. Alright, so this is how we calculated the execution times of both the cases and then we calculated the speed up. So that's all for today's lecture. If you understood this question, please like our video, share it with your friends and mention in the comment section below how did you find the video. Subscribe to the channel of Easy Engineering Classes for more such tutorials in this preparation series as well as tutorials on other computer science related subjects. Press the bell icon so that you get the notifications for our upcoming videos in future and you don't miss any video. Thanks again. Good luck for your exam.